and uh, mainly I, I will uh, show uh, results from a dry model experiment that shows really the, uh, uh, the two-way interactions between MGO and the Northern Hemisphere because there is no tropical uh, processes, no connections. And uh, oh, this one uh, yesterday, Christina mentioned, but uh, today I'm going to show that uh, in more detail. And uh, after that, uh, I will talk about the two-way interactions between NGO and NO, and uh, uh, we'll again focus on the NO impact on NGO. So I, I should mention that the extratropical influence on the NGO is less well understood uh, compared to uh, tropical influence on the uh, extratropics. There is a lot of uh, uh, processes, uh, mechanisms were not uh, well understood. So it's, it's an ongoing topic. So for the examples of uh, mid-latitude influence uh, on the MGO, uh, there, there is one study by Ray and uh, John, 2009. Uh, what they did, they, they used a, a tropical tunnel, a channel model. So uh, only in the tropics. They look at uh, two MGO events to see what is the uh, initial, initialization process of the, those two MGO processes, uh, events. So what we found is that the only factor that is critical to the pro uh, reproduction of the MGO initiation is the time varying and lateral boundary condition uh, that is uh, in the middle latitude. Uh, so they specify the boundary condition from reanalysis. But uh, when such uh, lateral boundary condition uh, replaced, are replaced by time-independent condition, for example, climatology, they, they kill the MGO. Uh, so there is no generation of MGO. So these results just indicate that uh, the tropical influence can be a very efficient mechanism for the generation of MGO. So th th that is... Uh, one of the uh, example uh, early study. And uh, later, they look at the, uh, the mechanisms, so what is the processes. They, they look at the momentum transport, and they, they found that the momentum transport from the middle latitude uh, has a big contribution to the MGO initialization. Another example is uh, by Hong et al. Um, that's a very recent uh, paper. Uh, they look at the extratropical forcing of uh, 2015 MGO and uh, El Nino events. And they found the, the southward penetration of the northern wind uh, that, that uh, initiated from middle latitude uh, propagated to the tropics and that uh, uh, influenced the generation of uh, MGO and, uh, and El Nino uh, in this, this period. And then later, Nick Hall, he will uh, talk about uh, more uh, examples and the study, his study on the uh, uh, middle latitude impact on the MGO. So now I, I will switch to talk in a little bit more detail about uh, the uh, tropical, extropical interactions in a dry GCA. So the model uh, we use is a primitive equation, atmospheric uh, GCM, and that was uh, uh, developed uh, by Nicole. Uh, I'm glad he is here this time. Uh, I, I think he will describe in more detail this model uh, tomorrow. And uh, this model uh, is a T31 and uh, 10 levels model. It's quite low resolution, but uh, uh, able to capture the large scale uh, phenomenon in the atmosphere. And uh, the uh, special in this model is it has a time independent forcing and that is calculated empirically from the uh, reanalysis, long, uh, uh, long time uh, day to day uh, analysis. So this time independent forcing is to maintain uh, in the model a winter climatology. So that means the model, if you run a long time, you do the climate, the average, uh, you get a very uh, similar uh, climatology to the observation. And also not only the time mean, but also the, the, the changes, the variabilities. So because it's time independent forcing, uh, no other uh, variation in the forcing. So all the variabilities generated in this model come, come from the uh, in it, internal dynamics of the model itself. 
So what you will see is mainly the, for example, the, the uh, barrier kinetic instability, the middle latitude, uh, that, that will, uh, is main part of the variability in the model. Now, there is no moisture and no interactive connection, so it's, uh, it's a dry model. So what we did, we ran the model for 3,600 uh, days. Uh, it's, it, because of the forcing, it comes from the winter condition. So the, the, con the integration is a perpetual winter integration. <laughs> so we, we don't use the first six, six days that uh, uh, is ignored as the spin-up. So we use uh, 3,600 uh, days to do the analysis. So uh, what we would expect uh, is that uh, there won't be any uh, variability or waves in the tropics because there, there is no uh, like, uh, moisture or little convections. There's no, but uh, what we found is quite uh, interesting is uh, uh, it like this. So this is a model result uh, for, for the uh, 10 degree south to 10, 10 degree north average of 250 millibar uh, but has, uh, velocity potential. So that uh, represented the, the divergence field uh, in the tropics. So this is the uh, diagram. This is time from zero to 200 days. This is a longitude. So what you can see is that uh, in this period, you see the, this eastward propagation of the, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, disturbances of velocity potential. So the propagation is eastward, and this is another period from. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, it's okay. I just uh, if you have. Uh, all right. Thank you. So this is another period from day uh, two thousand eight hundred. Again, you see this kind of eastward propagation. So this is the raw data. This is unfiltered. Uh, data. If you do a, two, a 20 day to 100 day uh, band pass filtering, you plot this uh, diagram again, you see this kind of nice uh, eastward propagation of waves. Uh, one uh, feature is that it, the wave is stronger in the eastern hemisphere. And uh, also, it uh, propagates slower in the eastern hemisphere than in the western hemisphere. So those features, it looks very much like the NGO. So we, when we look, uh, got these results, we are intrigued by, by these results. Why did this happen? And there is, uh, so as I said, the, the, this kind of model, the only thing uh, uh, in the uh, atmosphere in the model is internal dynamics. There, there's, uh, uh, the, the, those kind of waves generated is the only reason that's uh, from the middle latitude. So uh, the, the time <coughs> interval, if you do the, uh, I need two of this. This comes. <laughs> All right. If you do the uh, uh, wave uh, number frequency spectral analysis, uh, you see that uh, the uh, this is the velocity potential at 250 millibar uh, in the model. You see the, this is a peak is around wave number one. And uh, the frequency is about 30 days. So it's a little bit too fast compared to MGO. So if it, uh, you, you will see later, it's, it's a Kelvin wave generated in the, in the tropics. Compared to the observation, a velocity potential at 200 millibar, this is uh, slower. It's about 50 days. That, that is really MGO. So, but the, uh, the main, like the, the, the structure, the wave number one, and the, the, uh, it's, it's close to, to this MGO. All right, so what we did, we, we did the UF analysis, try to capture this uh, wave, and uh, for uh, velocity potential, uh, we've, uh, this is UF1, uh, UF2, you see the, the, the monopole structure and the dipole structure, and the PC2 lead PC1 by about uh, seven, eight days. So that means th this happened about uh, uh, seven, eight days later, this pattern will appear. So that that represents uh, eastward propagation. 
So we designed very simple uh, index. Uh, it's the PC2 plus PC1 uh, eight days later. So it's like a combined uh, consideration of these two uh, uh, indices. So uh, we, uh, we uh, produce uh, like a middle latitude and a tropical uh, like a combined uh, diagrams to, to visualize this process. So I will go through this quickly to see how the tropics is connected to the middle latitude. So the, the colored area, that, that is uh, the velocity potential at 250 millibar. And the, the, the contour, that is uh, a 250 millibar stream function. So the stream function that will uh, represent the Rossby waves in the, in the middle latitude. So if you look at the color area, you see this, uh, uh, with time, you see the eastward propagation. Okay, but uh, we, now we go back. If you focus on this uh, middle latitude wave trends, you see at the beginning, uh, the, uh, there is wave trend in the North Pacific, but uh, you, you will see with time, you will see this energy propagate to the Atlantic and then uh, come back to the tropics. See, this is uh, this time. So now increase in, in the Atlantic. So there is some indication of the NO generation. And then now, the, 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 uh, here increase the wave activity here. And uh, the, uh, also at the same time, the tropical uh, diver divergence field uh, intensifies th this area and then propagate eastward. So th those kind of uh, uh, like a two-way interaction, it seems it's quite clear from this kind of uh, simulation. So uh, we calculated the wave activity flux uh, for this uh, uh, along the field of stream function uh, using the, the, the uh, formula by Takaya and then uh, Nakamura. So uh, uh, what you can see is uh, at wave uh, at day minus eight, you see the wave activity flux from the North Pacific from tropical tropics into the uh, North Pacific to North America. And uh, eight days later, you see the wave activity, a large part of uh, flux toward the tropics. So th those kind of uh, uh, wave activity will influence the tropics to generate another uh, uh, cycle of the uh, uh, tropical uh, waves. Uh, you, you also see there's another branch of wave activity that's uh, eastward probably that will influence the mid-latitude uh, Euro-Asia component. All right, so uh, this is a demonstration of the, uh, the, the dry model. So what we found is the tropical intra-seasonal variability generated in the dry model. Uh, tropical extra-tropical interaction are crucial in generating this model uh, variability, tropical variability. And uh, that in indicates the extra-tropical influence on the tropical waves. So the remaining question after this study is um, the contribution from moisture and convection. So uh, probably I talked with Nick, probably we, we can do another experiment with uh, including moisture to see how this model behave after we include another um, like processes. And for the mechanism is uh, how do uh, extra tropical large scale dis disturbances that uh, are equivalent to barotropic uh, propagating the tropics to generate tropical waves, not a bar clinic. So th th this is an uh, uh, area that's not uh, very well understood. Um, right now, uh, we are doing some kind of theoretical work to, to understand how this, uh, this interaction happens. Uh, there's two different kind of waves uh, that can be uh, influenced to each other. All right, so... Uh, now, I, I will switch to another um, topic. It's not topic, it's related. It's the MGO and the NO uh, uh, interactions. Uh, it's based on an uh, earlier study and also uh, David mentioned also. <laughs> so we use the NO index, uh, that is a uh, uh, pentad average. So that's 5 day, 5 day average. And the, the uh, MGO index is the Wheeler and Hendon uh, index. 
So we also have the penta to penta uh, average. And the, the purpose is to look at the intra-season variation of NGO and NO, how they are like correlated and uh, connected. So uh, we look at the winter, uh, sorry. We look at the winter uh, period. So because the, 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 the interactions and the uh, wave activity, raspberry wave generation is strong uh, in the winter season. All right, so this shows the eight phase, phases of the NGO, uh, phase one to eight, and the uh, equatorial region from 15 south to 15 north. So what we can see is uh, phase one, you see the uh, anomalous uh, precipitation generated uh, in the western Indian Ocean, and that propagate eastward. So I want to draw your attention to the phase two, phase three, and the six and the seven. That is when there is a convection dipole structure, the enhanced precipitation in the Indian Ocean and then reduced precipitation uh, in the uh, Western Pacific. It is in those uh, phases that will influence the middle latitude the most. Uh, the phase two, three, and the six and seven, they are just opposite. So this is the, uh, if you look at the diabetic heating, this is cooling, this is the heating. So, um, okay, what we did, uh, we look at the uh, lag composites of NL index for different phase, phases of the MGO, one to eight, and the lag zero, that's a simultaneous, uh, composite, for example, uh, this is the composite when MGO is in phase four. And the, the positive lag means NO lags the MGO. The negative lags means NO lead the MGO phase. So if you look at this part from zero to positive, what you can see is when M MGO is in phase two, three, four, that I just showed, that's a dipole uh, in, the, in the tropics. You see this, uh, after one, two, three pentas, you see the probability of positive NO. So th those numbers, they are 95% uh, statistically significant. Th those uh, white area is not, is not statistically significant. I didn't uh, plot. So the, the positive, the red increase uh, indicates the positive NO, the blue uh, indicates the negative NO. So that means when MGO happened in two, three, four pentas, so uh, two, three pentas later, you, you see positive NO. And uh, when it's in, in six, seven, eight, uh, you will see about two to four pentas later, uh, negative NO. So it's a very significant uh, results. And uh, other than that, if you look at uh, when NO leads the NGO, you, you will see that uh, when NO, uh, negative NO happens about uh, three to five pentas later, you see the, the, the occurrence of MGO two and three. And the, when positive NO happens about three or five day, to five days pentas, five pentas later, you see the probability of uh, MGO phase six and seven. So this is like a two-way interactions. The, the NO and MGO, not only there's lag and also there's lead association. So this one, uh, uh, David showed already, uh, you see the, the uh, phase three, uh, you see the uh, zero Penta, one penta, two penta later, you see the development of a positive NO. And the phase seven, that's the opposite. You see the uh, negative uh, phase of NO development. So um, I, I just uh, take a little bit of time to show you why this penta and th those, uh, those dipole uh, structure affected the middle latitude is the strongest. So what we did, we, we used the uh, LR, a pentad LR to do UF analysis. 
uh, that, that is uh, to find the, 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 the MGO, that is another representation. Of, it's very similar to the uh, Wheeler Hendon index, but uh, now we use only the OLR because OLR is more connected to the convection. So the, the, the first UF is uh, like a convection in the uh, maritime continents area. But the second UF is a dipole. It's a, a convection in the Indian Ocean and a depressed convection in the Western Pacific. So we will see that uh, which one is more effective in, in, uh, uh, in forcing the NO. So we designed thermal forcing, and uh, the first experiment is uh, put a heating uh, in the maritime continents. And the second experiment is put a heating in this region and a cooling in this region. It's a dipole. It's uh, try to mimic the, the, this uh, second UF. So this is the results uh, for the model uh, integration uh, average uh, for 500 meter bar height anomaly uh, six, to ten, 6 to 10 days later. This is 11 to 15, 15 days uh, after integration. You see experiment one, the response is very weak. Almost there is no response. But experiment two, you see the response is very strong. And you, all, you do see there is indication of uh, positive NIO. Uh, all right, so uh, to, to understand this, we did a lot of experiment to put this heating at different locations to see which one is the most sensitive location uh, for this response. So again, we do a linear integration for winter basic state with a single center heating uh, source put on the equator uh, for this region, 60 degrees east to uh, south 150 west, a 10 degree interval. So we have 16 experiments. And we look at the response at uh, day 10 to see uh, the, 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 the sensitivity to the location. So here is the example. You put the heating uh, at uh, 8 uh, east. So that, that means uh, the, the, the uh, Indian Ocean, tropical Indian Ocean. Uh, you see kind of uh, positive uh, uh, anomaly uh, response uh, in North uh, Pacific. So th th this is similar to the uh, negative NO uh, response. So the, the response is not a very sensitive to the location of the heating uh, in these regions from 60 to 100 in that area. So that means, uh, like the uh, the question David uh, raised in the, the last lecture, is uh, the, the heating is moving. How, how can you uh, uh, follow the, this kind of response? But it's not really sensitive to the to the location. So in these regions, the, the response is uh, it's very much like this pattern. Uh, when you put the heating at uh, 110 degree, that's near the maritime continent, there is almost no response. It's very weak. But when you put the heat in at uh, east of this uh, area, uh, the response is very similar to this pattern. So it's not very sensitive. But uh, if you compare this pattern with this pattern, you can see they are almost opposite. So the, uh, the, the response, uh, uh, if you put the, uh, the heat in, uh, in this region and this region is opposite. But uh, as uh, you, sh you see for the uh, phase MGO phase three and the phase seven, they are dipole. There is a heating and the cooling. So that means if you because this experiment is all heating there, but if you switch this to cooling, so it's the same as this one. So that's why that you add these two patterns together, you get a very strong response. So that, that that's uh, why the the, uh, the the response to MGO phase three and phase seven is the strongest. And um, so that's why the, the dipole structure, now the, uh, also Andy showed Fre Frederick's uh, study to look at the different uh, centers forecast is uh, uh, with respect to MGO phase three. So the, the reason for this uh, is that the, the heating uh, location uh, with respect to the, um, to the uh, uh, metanatitude, metanatitude jet. Uh, this region is, uh, for example, in the middle latitude, uh, the, uh, the uh, East Asia jet 
the, 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 the core is, uh, is just close to Japan and East Asia. So this region is to the west of the jet, and this region is to the east of the jet. So the, the, this uh, kind of behavior is really relative location to the jet. All right, so again, we can calculate the wave activity flux to see the uh, MGO phase three uh, simultaneous wave activity flux, uh, flux. You see the loose world propagation of waves. And uh, one penta later, you see more uh, to, to, the, to the north, uh, north east. And uh, two pentas later, uh, you can see the, the wave activity flux is mainly in the Atlantic. And there is a strong branch uh, to the south. So this kind of wave activity to the south that will impact the tropics probably will generate another cycle of the NGL. So what we did is also to look at the, uh, the uh, MAG uh, regression to, to NO to see how the NO uh, impact the tropics to, to see the, the, the zonal wind, how to propagate southward. So this is uh, when the NO is at the strongest, that's the uh, mag zero. And uh, one penta later, you see this kind of uh, uh, amplify, amplification of the zonal wind uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the subtropical Atlantic region. And the two penta later, you see stronger, uh, there is negative uh, anomaly of zonal wind in the in equatorial tropical Atlantic. And uh, again, you, you see this kind of movement. So that's uh, what uh, the, the last diagram shows, the, 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 the lag propagation of zonal wind. If you compare to the uh, composites of the uh, zonal wind uh, for different NGO phase, you, you can see that when the NO happens about uh, four, five pentas later. It's very similar to the phase seven and the phase six and seven. So that, that's why uh, in, the, in the table, I just show you at the beginning, uh, the uh, MGO uh, lags the NO about uh, four to five pentas. So this kind of uh, uh, southward uh, penetration of the zonal wind. So uh, schematically, it's uh, the uh, NGO propagate eastward, send the Rossby wave to the uh, North Atlantic, and uh, probably there, there's interactions with transients in intensify the NO, and then the, there's uh, influence uh, to the tropics. So now I, I'll show you some uh, examples how the uh, interactions between MGO and the NO impact the uh, subseasonal prediction. So this is one experiment we did uh, to look at the NO forecast scale uh, for a weak MGO and the strong MGO uh, comparison. So the uh, red curve, that's for when the initial condition has a strong MGO, uh, you forecast the NO. And the blue is so when the initial condition has a weak NGO. So what we can see is that there is a clear se uh, separation. The, the strong NGO initial condition uh, produce a better forecast scale of NO. So th th this indicates the uh, tropical influence. And uh, also, it, you can separate the, the, those uh, forecast by the uh, phase of the NGO, because the, what we, we, we saw is that the dipole phases uh, produce the strongest uh, uh, impact. So we category the, 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 the forecast with MGO phase 8145. So that's not a dipole. Uh, compare with uh, forecast with uh, uh, initial condition has a phase 2367 that has a dipole. So you see the, the NO scale, it's better when you have a dipole initial condition. So that, that's a just uh, uh, it's very consistent with, with the analysis. So this just to show the, uh, the, uh, the, the scale of 500 meter bar height uh, for pentas three and four. Uh, this is a weak MGO and the strong MGO. You, you see the increase of scale in the North Atlantic region. And also for temperature, 
uh, you see the, uh, the, uh, the, the, this is a weak MGO, strong MGO. You see the, the, the uh, uh, better scale in this region and, uh, and the European area. And this is a difference. So strong MGO minus uh, weak MGO. So this, this diagram from uh, Frederick Vitar, and uh, he looked at the different models. Uh, and this is another um, demonstration. And, uh, Andy showed the diagram this morning. Uh, this shows the, uh, uh, the the green one shows when the MGO is uh, in phase three after three pentas, the NO index. So you, uh, the, 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 this line is the uh, reanalysis. So that's the expected the, the, uh, observation. So most of the model has a weaker uh, response of NO after MGO phase three. On this side, it's the uh, three pentads later after phase seven. Again, you see most model is a weaker response, but the uh, Environment Canada model is uh, it's very close to the observation. So again, we look at the S two S handcast data to compare the NL scale for dipole and the long dipole. Uh, this is the uh, the dashed line. That's phase two, three, six, seven. That's the dipole MGO initial condition, and the solid line. That's the uh, long dipole. So you, you see the, the 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 this difference. It's it's quite clear. The the MGO uh, phase uh, when there is a dipole you get a better forecast. So now we, we can look at the other uh, direction, the impact of the, the, the uh, NO on the MGO forecast scale. So we separate this forecast, uh, look at the initial condition when there is a strong NO, and uh, here is the scale of MGO. So what you can see, okay, now this is our model forecast compared to the persistence, the MGO, uh, there is scale compared to persistence. But this one is the initial condition has a weak MGO compared to a strong MGO forecast. So the, the, the bar, that's, so we have a lot of ensemble members. So there is some period that are well separated. Uh, you can see it's in the first 10 days, there is almost no difference. But after 10 days, you see strong NO forecast, the scale of MGO is better than the weak NO. So uh, because you, you see the lag um, at the, this table, uh, it's about two, uh, three to five pentas. So that, that means the, the impact is uh, up here after 10 days. So this really indicates that uh, the, the mid-latitude uh, signal uh, has uh, impact on the MGO forecast scale. So that there, there is a uh, uh, two-way interaction. So now we look at the, the scale distribution for 200 millibar uh, zonal wind uh, scale uh, near the uh, tropics for strong NO. Uh, you see that this scale, there is uh, quite a lot of scale uh, in this band, in the tropics. But when you initialize the forecast with weak NO, the uh, tropical zonal wind scale, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, places is not as good as this one. This is the difference. So this is the increase of scale if you have a strong NO uh, in the tropics. Uh, Okay, this one is the uh, average of scale between uh, zero and the 90. So that's mainly just the south of the, uh, the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, uh, the impact uh, in, the, in the tropics. So this is a zonal wind. I think this is uh, near the equator. Oh, no, not the equator. This is uh, as a function of latitude. So this is the time, lead time. Uh, what you can see is uh, this uh, in shorter range forecast, the mid latitude, the scale is better than the tropics because we have the uh, theory of barricanic instability to support this shorter range forecast. In the tropics, there is a lot of convections, precipitation, so the scale is very low. But if you go beyond 10 days, 
you see the skill in the tropics is better than the middle latitude. So uh, this is the average skill. But you can categorize the strong NIO forecast and the weak NIO forecast. This is a difference. So what you can see is the strong NIO forecast. You have a better skill than weak NIO forecast after about 10 days. It's mainly in the tropics. So that means the NIO, strong NIO, uh, really uh, send a signal to the tropics uh, impact the tropical prediction. So this is to show why this happened. In the observation, you have a strong NIO, this is composite, lagged composite of 200 millibar uh, zonal wind anomaly after a strong NIO. So the NIO, uh, you have a strong zonal wind in the polar area and uh, persist uh, until two weeks. And suddenly, the, the, there is an increase of zonal wind in the tropics. This is zero. So this is an observation. In our forecast model, we also have very similar structure. So the, the NIO, and after about uh, 10 days, there is a suddenly there is a uh, increase of zonal wind in the tropics. So if you look at, because in this region, that's really associated with uh, MGO phase seven. So to summarize my talk, uh, is not, not, this is the second part. So we see there's two interactions between NAO and MGO and the lag association of the uh, low sub. Oh, I didn't show you this. Uh, impact on uh, surface air temperature. But uh, the, the really, we, we have some studies show that this kind of connection uh, impact the weather. Uh, the surface air temperature, uh, there is a very strong signal uh, in North America after MGO. And the NAO uh, intraseasonal forecast scale is influenced by the MGO, and the MGO scale is influenced by the NAO. So that's really a two-way interaction. Uh, all right, that's uh, what.